I were the Northeast Community College Communications team that recently competed at the NACTA 2012 contest down in Coffeyville, Kansas. My name is Lacey Dahlquist from Oakland, Nebraska. I'm Jesse Egerling from Milford, Nebraska. Jason Meller from Belden, Nebraska. And I'm Desiree King from Oakland, Nebraska. The top 10 cases of the media blowing everything out of proportion, according to the top 10's webpage, include the royal wedding, Super Bowl scandals, possible carcinogens, celebrity deaths, anthrax, West Nile virus, swine flu, which most of us know as H1N1, Charlie Sheen, tainted cantaloupe, and the year 2012. However, one thing that should be on this list that is not included is lean, finely textured beef, or more commonly known as pink slime. Since an ABC News story in March 2012 made a meal out of pink slime, the media has been having a heyday with the controversy they call pink slime. A survey conducted by Red Robin on April 4, 2012, found that 88% of U.S. adults are aware of pink slime, and that 75% of those are being somewhat concerned and 30% being extremely concerned. Which is why we will now fork our way through what pink slime is eat our way through the background behind pink slime, and address the controversies before finally feasting on the truth of lean, plant textured beef. First, let's work our way through what pink slime, or lean, finely textured beef, is. Most consumers have heard that it is a filler in ground beef, or they have heard that it is the product of grinding up all the leftover parts once all the meat has been removed. But in reality, pink slime is beef called either boneless lean beef trimmings or lean finely textured beef, pink slime is a small amount of meat still attached to the fat once the beef is cut into roasts, steaks, and other delectable beef delights. The process of separating the milk, the meat from the milk, the process of separating the meat from the fat is very similar to separate to separating cream from milk. According to ABC News, the beef trimmings are gathered, simmered at low heat to make it easier to separate the fat from the muscle, put in a centrifuge to finish the separation, sprayed with ammonium hydroxide to kill bacteria such as E. coli and salmonella, and finally compressed into bricks and flash frozen for shipment to meat packers and grocery stores. The end product, which is called LFTB, is often mixed into other food products such as ground beef according to meetme.com, March 8, 2012. Now some of you, like us, when we first heard of pink slime, may be thinking, what in the world is ammonium hydroxide? Well, we've done the research for you. Ammonium hydroxide has been stated to be safe since 1974 by the Food and Drug Administration. According to the American Meat Institute, since then, pink slime has also been recognized as safe by other organizations such as the World Health Organization, the United States Food and Agriculture Organization, the European Union, and several other countries according to the Common Sense Agriculture website, March 12, 2012. Ammonium hydroxide is a mixture of ammonium and water. Not only is it used in LFTB, but also in other products such as puddings, baked goods, cheese, chocolates, caramels, and gelatins, according to beefisbeef.com, March 10, 2012. BeefUSA.org states that ammonium hydroxide has been classified as a generally recognized as safe food additive by the Food and Drug Administration. Also, in 2001, the Food Safety and Inspection Service approved the use of ammonium hydroxide as a safety tool in food production. Ammonium hydroxide is utilized to kill bacteria such as E. coli and salmonella, thus making the food you and I eat safer. Now that we've forked our way through what pink slime, in, slime is, let us eat our way through the background behind pink slime. Essentially, according to Food Safety News, April 9, 2012, pink slime began its journey in 1971, when Beef Products Inc. C CEO Eldon Roth founded Roth Refrigeration and invented the roller press freezer. Then in 1974, the FDA declared food-grade ammonium hydroxide safe for consumption. In 1993, the USDA approved BPI's centrifuge process of separating, of separating lean beef from fatty, boneless trimmings. The next year, Roth started developing a pH enhancement system. 
to reduce the number of pathogens in beef. Next, in 2001, the FDA and USDA both approved BPI's pH enhancement system to treat lean beef, beef with ammonium hydroxide, and the company began marketing LFTB. However, in 2000, 2002, an error occurred, which resulted in the shipment of 13 contaminated boxes of LFTB to consumers instead of the rendering plant. According to the Food Safety News, BPI announced a recall, and the contaminated beef is assumed to have been consumed without leading to any reported illnesses. This is when former USDA microbiologist Gerald Zernstein comes in. Zernstein went and toured a BPI plant as part of the investigation into the contamination and was the person who first coined the phrase pink slime. According to the Daily.com, March 2012, Zernstein says he made the reference to pink slime in a private email. The email was leaked to the New York Times as part of a Freedom of Information request, according to MyNorthwest.com, March 25, 2012. Then, in 2004, federal school lunch officials raised the allowable percentage of LFTB in school hamburgers from 10 to 15 percent to help reduce costs, and McDonald's began adding LFTB to their hamburgers. In 2007, BPI was awarded the International Association of Food Protection's highest honor, the Black Pearl Award, for its, pet, for its commitment to food safety. In June 2008, LFTB was found in 75% of all hamburger patties found in the U.S. In July 2009, federal school lunch officials temporarily banned LFTB from a Kansas facility. This temporary ban was due to a concern over salmonella, similar to any other short-term food recall that has, had, that has occurred in the past. In this 2009 case involving LFTB, thanks to the diligence of the processor, there was no illness linked to the product. Next, we are going to address some of the current controversies involved with pink slime. Consumers have been ingesting food treated with ammonium hydroxide for almost 30 years. Why all the fuss now? Both Zernstein and retired microbiologist Carl Custer agree that pink slime should not be used in food consumption, or it should at least be labeled as such for public knowledge. Custer believes that pink slime is not as nutritious as ground beef because instead of Using muscle tissue, it also contains connective tissue. Of course, we need to include British celebrity chef Jamie Oliver in all of this. Oliver has done a wonderful job of convincing, convincing the public that lean, finely textured beef is terrible stuff. Starting back in April 2011, with a season two premiere of Jamie Oliver's Food Revolution broadcasted on ABC. According to Food Safety News, April 9, 2012, Oliver poured liquid ammonia over scraps of meat in front of a live audience to illustrate how pink slime was made. The pro problem with this is that Beef Products Inc. uses a small amount of ammonium hydroxide gas and Oliver soaked beef trays in liquid ammonia. Plus, just this past March, Oliver and his crew from Food Revolution created a website, StopPinkSlime.org to confuse people about what lean, finely textured beef is, and to scare people away from eating beef util utilizing the name pink slime. However, it doesn't stop there. Fast food restaurants such as Burger King, McDonald's, and Taco Bell have announced that they will no longer serve beef that contains LFTB. Also, several grocery store chains have decided not to sell any beef containing LFTB. Parents are greatly concerned by all the media hype over school lunches containing pink slime. But there have been a few retailers, such as Hy-Vee here in the Midwest, after initially banning LFTV, have seen through all the hype and have announced that they will give consumers a choice and will utilize signage to identify products containing LFTV. We've addressed the media hype about pink slime, so now on to the truth of LFTV. As stated before, Pink slime is lean, finely textured beef, which, according to the USDA, is 100% beef. And that is why, if you look at a package of ground beef, LFTB is not labeled. Both Dr. John Floros at Pennsylvania State University and Dr. Gary Acuff at Texas A&M University said that when produced in accordance with USDA regulations, all forms of LFTB are safe, according to the Omaha World Herald, April 8, 2012. 
This article also stated that between the years 2000 and 2010, ground beef samples that were tested by the USDA, whose job is to provide consumers with fair, accurate, and science-based information, decreased in the incidence of E. coli by 55%. This is good news in terms of food safety for the general public. Also according to the Nebraska Farm Bureau, March 2012, the beef industry is actually proud to produce such products as LFTB because it maximizes the amount of lean beef they can, they can get from their cattle. According to this source, around one and a half million more head of cattle would need to be harvested annually in order to make up the difference. This poses a problem because not only is it not feasible with natural resources or technology, but also because meat consumption is rising while supply is declining. Additionally, BPI announced on March 25th, 2012, that due to the loss of business because of the hype around LFTB, plants in Texas, Kansas, and Iowa have suspended operations for 60 days, and the plant in Nebraska is only partially operational. This puts approximately 650 jobs on hold, as well as reduced BPI's production by 70%. According to the Federal Safety Inspection Service, production labels of 90% lean beef trimmings and 90% lean ground beef have considerably similar nutritional values. Today, we have forked our way through what pink slime is, eaten our way through the background of lean, finely textured beef, addressed some of the controversies before finally feasting on the truth of this product. With all the media and immediate access to online resources and tons of information being thrown at consumers every day, it's no wonder that an issue like LFTV has become such a big deal in such a short amount of time. On top of that, with all the blogs that can be found, how does one figure out what information is accurate and true, and what isn't? But if consumers take the time to research information for themselves, or access scientific and data-based sources instead of just listening to what the media has to say, they can become better educated. So now, with what we have learned today, we can make an educated food choice. And, as Nebraska Lieutenant Governor Rick Sheehy said, dude, it's beef. <laughs>